How's it going, guys? So today is the day. She's back. Pride of the Eaton Soken. The one and only. The vessel is armed with its new cratch covers on the front here that she is completely unaware of. So hopefully I've made things up a little bit after last week's events. Yet I accidentally snapped her kitchen worktops that she's been working on for the last six months. <laughs> But also a bit of sad news, the departure here of our new neighbours. They're off to go continuous cruising, something that we're going to join them with very, very soon, guys. But that does leave this little space at the top here free for a lovely Pepsi slash Union Jack coloured vessel. But more of that later. I knew this would happen. Oh, it's ASO, isn't it? Also, as part of the package of the covers, we've been gifted our very own paddling pool. We are still working on a little solution for this. And it's not uh, Alice and our Cratch Cover Ladies' uh, fault at all. Because, yeah, we just went with the uh, original fittings of where the old uh, Cratch Cover on the back here used to sit. Check it out! We've got a window. So yeah, the last two weeks we've been trying to finish off these Cratch Covers as a little sort of surprise for Bex when she gets back. That just completely like transforms the look of that like little space, doesn't it? Inside, just looking in through the window, it looks completely different. Go in into the conservatory. I mean, there's a little thing where you can go in like that first, and then I can teach you how to roll it up. Oh my god, it's so cool! So from the bottom, you just roll it up. And I'm telling you guys, she's holding it back, but the amount of dolphins swimming around her body right now, because I had the same dolphins swimming around mine the other day. End dolphins, see what I've done there, guys? What do you give it out of seven? Out of seven? Seven, I reckon. Also last week, I was trying to get these little rusty patches done for Bex too. She did know I was doing these and uh, yeah, I didn't get the right colour match. So the, the paint's completely a different shade of blue, but with the good always comes the bad. I mean, this is just embarrassing, isn't it? But let's see what Bex, Bex makes of it, eh? Because she hasn't noticed yet. So the moment of truth, the identical colour match. Rebecca is about to see this for the very first time. She hasn't mentioned it actually, so she, they probably just sort of blended in perfectly well when she came in a second ago. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah. Like new skin that hasn't been tarnished by the sun. <laughs> I mean, I was focusing on the canopy, to be honest. I wasn't yeah. paying that much attention. It can't stand out that much because otherwise I think I would have noticed it. Well, my problem is the one on the roof is quite big. So I didn't know if we wanted to get the proper colour match for it or not. I mean, I wondered about repainting in here anyway. I wonder if it'd be better in a lighter colour because it's quite dark, isn't it? And we have to paint this to cure the leak problem. Do you want to have a look at the ones on the roof outside? Yeah. Step outside quickly and then you can see what you think. I wasn't massively impressed. It felt like I was really bodging. And you know me, I certainly don't bodge. I mean, it's not like massively noticeable. It, if you're looking for it, you can see it, but you could walk past that and not really notice. It's really hard to colour match paint. These look disastrous, these. Are you ready for these ones? Lift that up there. This is really bad. Them? Yeah, and here. I mean, that looks horrible, doesn't it? It's not that bad. I mean, it's better than it looked before. If you look at it like that, then you feel a bit better about it. The integrity of the boat is more important than the aesthetics, you know? Do you want to go and witness the turd that I've created on our rooftop. Yeah, do you remember this big crack on the roof that I treated last week? I mean, this, this is really bad now. Yeah, I put some filler on it and then I put some red oxide on it and now I've got a show Bex. And uh, yeah, then I've got to paint it as well. I'm a bit worried about painting it with, you know, the non-colour match, really. I'd like to get the real thing. But let's see what Bex thinks, eh? And this is absolutely horrific, guys. And if things couldn't get any worse... I nearly fell in here the other day. Oh, my God. Oh, hang on. No, it hasn't cracked. Is that the edge? That's the edge. It has lifted here, though. You've done a really good job. I haven't. I saw some of the comments that some viewers had helpfully sort of added about how you should get the metal really shiny because the mm. filler won't adhere to it. And you can see, actually, there. Can you see, like, if you push on that, it's not attached. It's lifted That's away. That's not good, is it? That needs to come it back up again. It might have to come out. We may have put gone a bit too overkill on putting right. all these things on yeah so it's got nothing to adhere to we put a 
aquastil under there, followed by the red oxide. And I have a feeling it's meant to be completely clean of any of that. But, and also people were saying as well, you should go much further yeah. out. Because if water's got under there, the chances are I know. it will have leached for each direction. So I, I never further. even thought about it, but yeah, you would, you'd go all the way around, maybe double the amount. We're slowly turning into that, that hippie boat, aren't we? Okay, here we go again, guys. We are gonna move the boat. We're releasing the boat from its chains and we're gonna move it. See this lovely little spot here in front of it? Where old Henry used to have his. And that way, if we ever wanna take the boat out, it's really easy to get the boat out around here without another boat in the way. I mean, we've been on this marina for about a year now and we've been sort of lumbered in the corner, which has been fine because we've got lots of work to do on it. But it does uh, prohibit you from just taking it out for the afternoon or something if you want to. Do we want to? <laughs> what do you reckon? Is it good to move it? Yeah, might as well then. No more um, well, parallel park in the boat. Straight back in. She's only been back a few hours. She's already untying. <sighs> There's always something that I really like about untying the boat and, and moving it around, even if it is only this tiny little area. It's just exciting. And you'd be surprised at how easy it is to pull the boat like this. It's just me at the front and Bex at the back. And yeah, just look look how easy it is. And remember, our boat is really heavy as well. But then again, there is that possibility that it is that secret superhuman strength that is pulsating through my veins. This is the video that will break us, isn't it? Make us stars, because we moved the narrow boat. About uh, 10, 10 metres. All very, very exciting stuff, guys. Again, our YouTube channel is pushing the boundaries of entertainment. OK, time to sort out one of my many errors. Silicon. Me big wipes. Time to load up. Daddy Crowbot is coming home to play. So, do you guys remember our little turnbuckles on the side of the boat here that hold the cratch cover on? Never put any sort of solution behind it to stop the water getting in in the future. Hashtag rusty rusty. Something tells me this is going to be a very, very slow process. So yeah, we're going to have to do all these, these, all these, all the ones at the back. Bloody all of them. So advice from fellow boaters, we are sticking some silicon in the holes. I don't know. Put it in, put it out, put it in, put it out. I think we've done all right here. Now you've got to take all the bloody things out again to shove a bit of silicon in there. Bloody ball, AK. Okay? Quite a bloody lot of them as well. And use my big boy wipes to wipe away any excess silicon. Self threading screws. Only got a few, and they're so hard to get hold of these ones, I don't seem to make them anymore. Last thing I want to do is to drop one down to the river. I've lost a screw. One of the side ones fell in. Bloody dropped one of these screws in. We've, we had the exact amount and they're hard to get hold of. I mean, there's no hope, is there? And then wipe it all off again. So yeah, you can see here, you just turn out left when you want to leave the marina, nice and easy. So after Chris came along and sabotaged my worktop, that wasn't the end of his um, destructive skills because he then went to pick up the little inlay that it's gonna cover the sink and this is what happened. This is the little bit that, like the sink cut out flesh, shall we say, from the hole here. And Chris just went to pick that up and this happened. It's like, dude, what is going on? I must have superhuman strength if that just shatters in the palm of my hand. I'm just saying I've picked it up many times and it's never broken. That's all Don't I'll say. To <laughs> I'm just going to cut in a little bit deeper and so then the board will sit about here where the sink starts and it will hinge itself on that rim of the sink and that rim of the sink. Mm, rims. Just uh, directing Becca where to cut there. Hello! It's like a telephone from the 80s. It needs its own briefcase. The end bit's <laughs> come off again. Well, it was ripped off in a fit of anger. <laughs> Not by me. And then out of nowhere, Becca managed to sit on the worktop and snap a part of it off too. Unfortunately, we didn't capture this on bloody film. Typical. So yeah, here she is fixing it. And here I am trying to get my own back. And this is all to rectify the, uh, the crack that you caused a minute ago. What are you gluing there? So Chris is like loving the fact that like he can dissolve any responsibility 
for himself because I was just sanding back the tectonic plate rift that was created from the last episode and lent too hardly on an uneven surface on this edge board where it's biscuited to another board and I've just ripped the glue apart. So I'm starting to wonder if there's a bit more at play, if like it's gone a bit brittle or something. Oh, and it's been transported a lot and kept in the wrong position a lot. It's not going well on the old worktop front at the moment. So we've got a gas leak at the moment. Um, it's, yeah, just a gas leak, I suppose. <laughs> Smells of gas whenever we put the stove on. Is it called a stove? I'm sure enough now, we're trying to be technical, aren't I? It's just a cooker top, in it? And it's... The top part just smells of gas whenever we turn the gas bottle on. Again, I was using like an adjustable spanner and there's not much space, so I probably haven't tightened it. We need your superhuman strength to do it. You've tightened it. That just gets in the way. Look at you holding it like it's some disease. It's disgusting. I hate things which are dirty, mm -hmm. hence why I hate the boat. <laughs> Where's the leak coming from? We fiddled around with this thing, we fiddled oh. around with that thing, we fiddled around with all of it, haven't we? And for anyone that's worrying that, you know, we shouldn't really be messing around with gas by ourselves without any experience, uh, Rebecca is actually a retired gas engineer, so there you go. <laughs> that is complete rubbish. We haven't got a bloody clue, but you know she likes to try, bless her. No one's ever been harmed with a little bit of gas, have they? Good old gas. It moves up and down. Okay, so time for me to take over the reins of the operation. The brains of the operation. <laughs> Whack the gas back on. And you'd be surprised at how many people don't know how to test for gas, actually. Looks safe. So, yeah, a little secret, a little tip for you guys. This is how you detect if you've got a gas leak. Leak extracted. So, like many of you suggested, what I'm going to do to fill the big old crater in the worktop is mix up some glue with some... Um, leftover sawdust wood shavings and kind of cram it into the gap to kind of bridge that rift a bit and give it a bit more stability. Um, I've already glued it from the top. So here's me, uh, me wood shaving cud. A little bit of shavings mixed up with glue and I'm just going to work a little bit into the gap at a time because actually from the back, probably due to warpage, there's quite a big gap whereas the front sits nice and flush which is why it might have been a sort of weak point. So here we go. It's not pretty, but it's on the back side, so it should be fine. And come tomorrow when that's all dry, I'll sand it back to a smoother finish anyway. But that is the rift filled, the pie filling injected, the donut jam squeezed. I don't know what I'm on about. Anyhow, the tear in the wood should hopefully be now well cemented together. It must be the glue flumes. Flumes? <laughs> Fumes. <laughs>